to go. Well, welcome everybody to the call. I am so excited for uh, tonight's call. This is one of my favorite uh, subjects that we're going to be talking about uh, tonight. And I truly want to have you really pay, pay closer attention because now that we are in the realization piece, this is where all the things that you desire, your dream business, all the, all the questions that you answered prior. And I want to just say thank you to all of you who responded via email, and we will be addressing some of those through this uh, presentation tonight, some of the uh, concerns and some of the things that you found that got into your way. So, but here's the deal, when it comes to self-realization, I think the questions that you start to ask yourself, truly, are you ready? Are you truly ready to do what you have not done before in order, in order to get what you really truly desire? Because it's always been there for us, right? What we desire has always been there. It's interesting how we betray ourselves and things get in the way of us achieving and getting what we really want. So I'm going to just say to you as lovingly as I can, stop the excuses, stop the stuff, really get clear about who you are, what you want and why, which we've talked about earlier in this process. And then that will help facilitate moving through some of those things. So let's get started because we have a lot to cover this evening. So as we talked about, as you know, this is where we're talking about realization. So you already know that you're, you, you become the creator of your reality. You have everything you need and personal mastery truly is a way of life, right? So this is not personal development. We all think, you know, we all talk about personal development, but this is really mastery. And what I mean by mastery, and I always share this, is the fact that doing what we know we are, should do, for lack of a better word. Right. So it's like there's so many things that we are already aware of. However, we do not practice. And so we'll be really talking about those tonight as we go along. So here's, I asked you what you were passionate about. I asked you what you, was, you were excited about. So now I just really want to take a second and say, what is the life that I most desire? What is the life that you most desire? What is it that you love? What are you passionate about? What is it? Where is your mission? Do you have a mission that you really are excited about? There are so many things, as you can see by the diagram, that you're great at. So really identifying those things that you're great at, what the profession, vocation. And most, most importantly, the world needs it. See, the world needs for us to shine. The world needs for us to bring our gifts and talents to it, right? And then when you really create a way that you can take that, that passion, that purpose, and now get paid for it. So now you're not even working, right? Now you're not even working. So remember, as you see here on the graphic, success starts with a burning desire inside of yourself and the determination to never quit on it. When you put these two together, what you will end up with is my number one value. And my number one value is freedom, right? Being in control of my own destiny, making my own decisions, and truly, truly taking what I love to do, taking all of my gifts and talents and using them in a way that really, really serves. So let's talk about some of the key reasons why some of you talked about the dream, the dream business has not been created. And this one was really interesting to me because it's something that we talk about with being in a fit. When we talk about being in a fit, most people find themselves overeating, doing things that they normally wouldn't do right? Because they're trying to, they don't really recognize it yet, but they're trying to fill a void. And some of these voids are truly in the subconscious, not even in our conscious mind. It could be something we smell, something that happens, something that triggers an old memory. And then all of a sudden we're stuffing our face with things. And you talked about being, you know, talking about drinking. And this wasn't just really drinking alcohol. I thought this was funny. It was really drinking soda, right? People talked about being addicted to a Diet Coke, Right, thinking that they were doing all the things that they needed to do, the Diet Coke that went along with the Big Mac and the fries and, and, and the sugar that was being consumed. But these are the things that we do. We overeat, we bench watch Netflix and all kinds of things to try to fill that void. So we, if you look at this, and, and I really understand, so I'm going to try to address some of these things as quickly as I can, but it really comes down to, to this is where personal mastery really makes all the difference in the world, right? So when you can identify these feelings, 
when you can identify that void, when you see yourself getting up, and this is why we, when we talk about uh, really working with people that want to lose weight, we talk about the first things that you really truly want to do is clean out your pantry, clean out the refrigerator, get rid of all those things that are in your way so that if you have, so when, so when that feeling hits you, you would have, actually have to leave your home or leave wherever you are to go facilitate that, which may give you just enough time, just enough time to make a different decision once you have the ACT principle. Remember, we talked about the ACT principle. Acknowledge the feeling, challenge it, and then transform it, right? So we, we want to fill that void with anything that gets in the way, and that's what keeps us, keeps us really from uh, achieving our dream business. Also, what keeps us from achieving our dream business is that we can be so busy doing so many things, right? One of the things that I think we can get caught up on, and some of you will not agree with this, and that's okay. Um, I'm not looking for agreement necessarily. So, but some of the things that we can get caught up in is social media. Now, social media can be very good, very powerful, great for training, great for doing a lot of things. But it is also a vehicle that you can get lost on to try to make yourself feel like you are doing something or you're creating your business. Whereas all you're doing and what's happening is every time you get a comment you don't like or every time something happens you don't like, it triggers an emotional reaction. And then all of a sudden you're trying to figure out, it's like jumping on the scale and weighing yourself every day, right? So it's those things, those distractions that get in our way, right? That once we get control of that and we start to really have personal mastery is really when our lives can start to change. Because now we are in the realization section. So this is not time for excuses and nonsense. This is time to really pay attention. We've done a lot of work up to this point. So now we want to pay attention and make the change. If you're not making these changes, then you know you're not really committed to your dreams and you're not committed to doing what you say you want to do for yourself. And this is my favorite, overly concerned about the good opinion of other people. And this gets so many of us, right? It gets so many of us. I, I was raised this way you know, just trying to please everybody else, wanting to make sure I fit in, doing all of those things, right? So when we get tied into our passion and our purpose, when we get tied into our mission, when we're tied into what we're here to do, we really almost have to be able to shut out the good opinion of other people because they have, they have their own reasons and their own objectives, right? Because if, they if they're not living the life they desire, they don't want to see you living the life you desire. Right, so they want to pull you down and and keep you where they are. That's why it is so incredibly important to pay attention to who you surround yourself with, who you're hanging out with, who who are you really working with. Right, so incredibly important. And above all, above all, and this is almost <laughs> this can also be put into the category of addiction when you're accepting. And we're talking about this. Somebody had wrote in about just being in their comfort zone and accepting mediocrity as a way of life, right? So it's just that it becomes acceptable. So what happens? We, we have dreams. And if we think back five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, some of us even longer than that, right? We think back to the dreams we had once upon a time. And then you look at what are you dreaming for today? What are you looking for today? And then you can start to see how much you may have given up, how much you may have got to the place where it's just now, well, man, I don't need all that. Or I don't need this. I don't need, and we start to dumb our dreams down, right? And I believe without question, it's time to bring those dreams up because we're at a place in our lives. We're at a place where we can provide so much service to people. We can make such a difference. The tools that are here today that we can make a difference with, all it takes is us putting our personal energy into those tools and making them happen. So there were a few more that I want to talk about here. And this is for anyone that's in Jump to Health and in, in, in any MLM direct sales business, right? And this was a real, this one was pertinent along all the comments that I got. The feeling that you're leading people down a path of failure to secure your own results. Well, let's address this really quickly, right? You, if you are doing exactly as you are required to do, sharing your stories, doing all the things necessary to build your business, you cannot lead somebody down a path of failure. They could take their own path to failure, but you cannot lead them a path if you are doing what you know is right for you in, in building a business. Where we start to get that feeling, 
when we start to get that feeling, and again, I'm, I'm, this is just the reality, when we start to get that feeling is when we know we're not doing all we can. So when we're not doing all we can, and we're not, we're, we're telling people what to do, right? And we're not doing it ourselves, that's where that feeling that you're leading people down a path of failure, right? But if you are taking the lead and truly, you know, doing all the things necessary to build your business, then you, you truly do not have to ever concern yourself about leading somebody down a path because they're going to do what you do. People will do what you do, not what you say to do because they watch you. They don't pay attention to your words, right? Another one that came through was living the MLM lies and hype. And fortunately for those of us here tonight that are with Jump, we, that is not an issue because there are no lies, there's no, there are no hype. The thing of the beauty of Jump is that if you're with Jump and you're doing that as your dream and, and a way to facilitate your dream, you know that anybody that, that you're working with cannot be heard here because of something that is being said or, or done, right? The other piece that was kind of really interesting was duplicating failure, which we kind of pretty much covered already, right? So when you really look at the systems and you look at you doing the things that, that you want to do, if somebody started to do what you do, here's a real question that you can ask yourself if you're concerned about duplicating failure. If somebody started to do the things that you're doing, would they have success or would they fail? So then you can really simply understand very quickly whether you're duplicating failure or you're duplicating success. Because again, we cannot control what other people do, but what we do have total control over is what we do, right? So, and then the, this was also a really good one, trying to convince people to be in business with you, even though you have not accomplished what you're telling them is possible. Well, this is why you have a team. This is why you connect people to other people. So let's just say you're talking to someone that says, hey, you know what, I, I, I really want to be able to earn X number of dollars, and you may not be earning those dollars, but you know the leaders in your group or somebody in your group who is and say, hey, you know what, let me connect you, not to convince the person to do anything, but let me connect you with someone who's doing that so they could see proof positive, personal, that it is possible for them to do that. So you do not have to be in that position. All you have to do is tell the truth. Hey, I haven't been here long enough to do that yet. This is what I'm working on. This is what I'm doing. This is what I believe. If you would like to connect with someone that's doing that, I can do that. We have plenty of people in here that are doing that. So you don't have to lie. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to feel bad. You don't have to feel small. All you got to do is tell the truth. Just tell the truth and connect them with somebody who is doing it. it takes all that fear and nonsense away. Right? So let's have some fun here, right? So can passion and purpose overcome the fear of failure? So how do you overcome that fear of failure? Well, if you look at these graphics here, you'll see, you know, you find the lesson, you get into the right headspace, you turn the internal model. Off. So here's the deal, right? And again, sometimes people get very uncomfortable with this, right? But when you are truly, truly building something and you're going for your dreams, you are going to build a life, you, try, you, you are going for a legacy, you will fail, right? That's just part of life. That's not a big deal. It, it's just part of the process. So when you find the lesson, right, and you get into the right headspace, then you can turn, you can change that internal monologue, right? So everybody has all these cute little remedies and all this other stuff. And I think Nike said the best, you just do it, right? So if you really, it comes down to the bottom line, it comes down to how much do you believe in yourself? If you believe in yourself, you know what? People will trust and believe in you. But if you don't believe in you, right? And, and then something happens or somebody wants to reject something that you're doing and you don't believe in what you're doing, then of course you're gonna, you're gonna go put your head in the sand and hide, right? But the bottom line is how do you overcome fear of failure? You believe in yourself. One of the things that I think is critically important is when you care about how you, when you care more about how you feel than how other people feel about you. And this was one for me that I had to work on and continue to work on being so concerned about how other people see you, trying to fit in, trying to do all those things to, to, to make it okay. So then if something happens or it doesn't work out, when you're in that space, man, that is a devastating feeling. So truly being able to keep yourself above that Right, so how people perceive you is none of your business, right? Um, when you know 
here's something that's really interesting. When you know you will deliver what you promise, right? So when you know you will deliver what you promise, you don't have to really concern yourself with fear of failure, right? Because you're going to deliver what you promise. So there is no reason for you to be rejected as long as you are delivering what you say you're going to do, whether it's in a product, whether it's in a service, no matter what it is, right? And when you know that the product or service that you are providing is a solution to the problem that people are having. Right, so when, so when you are in integrity, when you are being authentic, right, when you are truly being of service and you know that you're not in this just for you, you are in this to be of service, to make that difference, right? So this is really what, this is really what it comes down to, ladies and gentlemen. It comes down to what your true real intentions are. If your true real intentions are to serve and make that difference and, and satisfy a mission, then, Fear of failure rejection isn't even in your, it's not even in your world, right? Because the mission, the purpose, the passion is far greater than somebody saying no or no, not right now or whatever it may be. It doesn't matter, right? Because when you know that what you have will change lives and make a difference and shift the consciousness of, of people around you, I'm telling you all kinds of things start to happen. So yes, Passion and purpose without question will overcome fear of failure because it will not be anything that you would be afraid of. So let's go into the difference between self-betrayal and self-realization. And self-realization is really very simple and we'll talk more about that as we go through this process. But what is self-betrayal? Well, working on a job or business does not bring you joy, right? How many of us know people, maybe ourselves included, that are doing things, working in a business, doing things that we don't really want to do that's not bringing us joy, not waking up in the morning filled. I mean, when you wake up in the morning, you jump out of bed, you're so excited about what you get to do. If that's not happening, then there may be something you want to look at in terms of what you're doing to yourself. Staying in relationships that are not working. I love people that stay in relationships, especially ones that say, oh, I'm doing it for the children not understanding that staying in a defective, destructive relationship is doing more damage to the children than staying in that relationship. And this is one that's a big one for me, right? So everything I'm sharing with you, I know you already know. And, 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 and I'm not speaking this as if I'm not part of the process because when it comes to not speaking your truth or standing up for yourself, trust me, that's one that I have to continue to work on because I still have those that, that, that subconscious in me that, that wants to fit in, that wants to be polite, do all those things the way I was raised, so forth and so on. So this is something you wanna be really aware of when you're saying yes, when you wanna say no, when you're not saying something that you know you truly want to say, but you don't say it because you wanna avoid confrontation and then you don't wanna speak your truth, that is stone cold self-betrayal, putting yourself down instead of just, and, and, and instead of just speaking your truth and speaking your truth in a way that somebody can hear it, not in a way that's angry or any of those things. I'm just talking about standing in your ground, standing for what's true for you. Also, what is the biggest one for self-betrayal? Feeding your body junk food instead of good nutrition. So it's like you're throwing junk in your body, you're destroying yourself, putting garbage into your system, sugar, fat, all kinds of stuff. And there's good fat. So let's be clear about that. There is really, really good fat. I'm talking about junk fat, food fat, that, that's fried in canola oil and all kinds of crap like that, right? So feeding your body junk food instead of good nutrition, that should be your first clue that there's something going on with you. If you are putting stuff in your mouth and you're destroying your body and you are putting junk in your body, that should be your first clue that says, hmm, don't be mad at yourself. But that should be your first clue to say, what is going on? Hmm, can I stop? Take a moment. Just take a moment and see what's really happening with me, right? When we allow an addiction to rule your life, when we allow something that we're addicted to to take control, whether it's watching TV, drinking, whatever it is, whatever it is that is that, that's ruling your life, then that is just not even beginning to allow yourself to show up fully. And my favorite, being inauthentic. Right, so many of us, like you see this mask in this graphic, many of us put on different masks for different people that we're talking to. We become, you know, just this um, master at 
changing identities based on what we think somebody wants for us or doing something or being the person that we think. We have this sixth sense, all of us have this sixth sense of what people want and we become that. So we become inauthentic instead of standing true for who we, who we really are. And so how do you do, so how do you bring it to self-realization? This, this is a very simple statement, but very challenging to do. And that's being true to yourself. So here's what I would love for you to take with this. Is think back to, I don't know whether we were in week two or week three, when we talked about our values and we went through our, 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 our values exercise, right? So really get that clarity, stay clear on your values and be true to yourself, right? And start to truly look at creating your livelihood from your passion. And that doesn't mean day one that you might be in a place to, you know, it's not, I'm not telling people to, to leave your job or do anything else, but I'm talking about being able to start the process of creating your livelihood from your passion. So the things that you are passionate about, you start to live on a daily basis. It's taking those small little steps every day, every way possible, right? So you're bringing that joy, you're bringing that juice into your life. You're being true to who you are. You're being of service and co-creating with a power greater than yourself, knowing that there's a power greater than your, your heart is beating, you're breathing. There's all kinds of things that are happening within your body that you have no, that you don't even know how it's, it's just it's happening, right? So there's a power greater than yourself. And whether you call that God, universe, source, whatever, it doesn't matter. But when you know that you are part of that process and you are part of that creating and that you are creating your reality. So self-realization is taking full responsibility, knowing that you are responsible. Everything that's in your life today, as it is, you have created. It is a result of your creation. No more, no less. Right. So what we have or do not have is based on what we have chosen to create. And we're going to go a little bit more into this as we go. But let's talk about how does self-betrayal impact your life? Well, I tell you what, for me, and again, I'm, I'm speaking for me so you can maybe find a little bit of you in what I'm sharing. So self-betrayal impacts my life because I then start to play small, right? I take my gifts, I take my talents, and I put them in the back seat so someone else can shine. And it's not about ego. I'm not talking about from ego. I'm just talking about when, for whatever reason, I am not fully embracing who I am as a person, when I'm not fully embracing everything about me. I play small. And when you play small, you miss so much of your life. I miss so much of my life. So when you have that awareness, this is when that acknowledge, challenge, transform comes in. So when you have that awareness, and it's not, again, this is not from an ego standpoint. It's just what you're doing to yourself, what I do to myself, right? And so then we have to ask, why do we allow it to rob our spirit and our soul, right? Because your spirit and soul is happy, is filled with gratitude, is filled with love, is filled with juice and joy, right? But when we betray ourselves, man, it just doesn't feel good. You get this feeling of despair. You get this feeling of disappointment in yourself. You start judging yourself. And this is, I'm just talking about what I do to me. So maybe, maybe you don't do this to you, but I certainly do it to myself, right? And it's easy for me to recognize when I betrayed myself. And you know how I, I can feel how I know when I betrayed myself? It's just with how I feel. It's not really complicated, right? You absolutely know, right? Absolutely know without question when you are behaving in a way that's not being true to you. Every fiber in your body is telling you. But we have come to a place and we've learned how to ignore it. And what I'm going to urge you to do is don't ignore it. Don't judge it. Just have a conversation with it, with yourself. And it's almost like saying, wow, isn't this interesting? I'm in this place where I'm doing something that's really not working for me. Why am I choosing to do this right now? And really start to see these areas as they come up. Because again, we are in the realization phase. This is where it happens. This is, I'm not, we're not doing these weekly meetings just for the sake of coming together and doing them, we're doing them so we can bring forth everything that we truly desire, right? Do you, you know, you don't want to feel like you're continuing to go in circles because for many of us, for many years, we've done that, especially in, if you're in this network marketing game. I love the fact that we have so many people that come on that's been doing this 10, 20, 30 years. And if you look at what network marketing and direct sales are supposed to be, 
We're supposed to be done sitting on the beach, enjoying ourselves, collecting all kinds of residual income. But instead, we're going around in circles, doing the same damn things over and over again and getting the same results, right? So it's time to show up differently. It's time to do something different. It's time to really be true, get through the, 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 the lies, the nonsense, the hype, and all the other crap that's in the way, right? And become authentic and really, truly brave of speed of service, right? And be more concerned about what you're doing for the people that you're serving rather than what you're going to get out of it. Because I can tell you this was just so interesting. I had a conversation today with someone and it was so funny. We were just talking about, we all know what to say. We know the right things to say and how to edify and blah, blah, blah. And you know what? But when it's crap, it's crap. And people know it, right? They can smell it. But when you're being real and you know that your true intention, when you know that your true intention, and only you know this, when your true intention is to be of service and not just saying it because it sounds good, because it makes you feel good, right? But because it's real, because you want to see somebody get what they truly desire, that's when you know you're, you're not going in circles any longer, right? And so what does being lost mean? There's a lot of definitions to this. But I say what being lost means is when you lack a dream. When you lack the dream, when you play your dream down, and when I choose to play small, that's when you're lost. And then you got you to gotta find new ways to get back into the game. So let's talk about how do we do that, right? So let's talk about self-betrayal and self-realization and how all of those aspects come together. Okay, so let's, we're going we're gonna to break down the word. I love, you know me, I love breaking down the words, right? So belief in self is diminished, right? So that's self-betrayal all day long. However, when you have a powerful vision, right, and you're clear and you have your values, and you know what it is that you're truly here to do and how you're gonna serve and how you're gonna make a difference and how by what you're doing is going to impact countless numbers of people's lives, right? So when, when that belief in yourself is ignited by that vision, you know that what you believe about yourself will become your reality, right? So what you believe about yourself will become your reality. So pay very close attention as we always talk about to those conversations that you're having within your own mind. Just as we're going through this presentation, you've had thousands and thousands of thoughts go through your mind, thousands of different things feeding, going through your head. Some of you are up and moving around, doing different things, blah, blah, blah. We all do because we get distracted. But really, I, I just want you to know what it comes down to is what you believe about yourself will become your reality, right? So the E, energy is drained by outside sources and, and when I say outside sources, I'm talking about people, places, and things, right? Who we surround ourselves with, what we do, situations that we allow ourselves to be in. When we betray ourselves by saying yes to something that we want to say no to, right? But here's the key. If you want to realize who you really are, your energy is restored by living with passion and purpose. So when you put that passion and purpose on and you know what it is, then you ask yourself a very, very simple question. Is what I'm doing aligned with my passion? Is it aligned with my purpose? Is it aligned with my mission and vision? Does it, is it of service? Is it bringing me closer to where I want to be? Or is it taking me further away? Really simple stuff. Again, I know I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but what I'm inviting you to do is really pay attention to it. Pay attention to those internal conversations. Pay attention to when we're betraying ourselves and really say it's about realization. This is what we're about. We're, we're, we're closing down on our training and it's really about realization. So what you focus on grows. So what do you want to grow? You want your business to grow? Then focus on the service that you're providing. Focus on the dreams of the families that you're going to serve and make a difference for, right? And uh, one of the comments I got back earlier uh, in this process too was a couple of people really talked about they wanted to support and help others. They wanted to encourage others over their obstacles. So focus on that, right? And the best way that you can do those things, encourage others over their obstacles and really be of service is by being a demonstration of what's possible by doing that yourself. So when we do that ourselves, it's amazing what happens. And this is my favorite, right? So when we look at time is wasted on things that do not serve you or others. I can't even tell you when, I love when people tell me, I love when people tell me, oh, Randy, I don't have time. And if we took the time to review that day, if we took the time to really review what actions we're taking on a daily basis, right? You will see that it is easy to come up with one, two, three hours a day, right? Of time being wasted on things 
that do not serve you or others, right? So the, the key is really to get clear on time once spent can never be replaced. That is the one thing if you want to learn how to really, really be in control of your life, master the moments, master your time. Time is you time utilized properly by mastering each and every moment, being clear about what you're doing. That doesn't mean that you don't, you know, do things that just that, that may be mindless or give yourself a break, whatever, but understand why you're doing it, understand when you're doing it, and don't get captured by going episode after episode after episode after episode, watching four episodes or something for two hours where you could have been really working on your business, working on yourself or doing something that truly your time, because once you spend that time, you don't get it back, right? So that, that once you spend the time, that's the one thing that you, you don't get back. Everything else you can get back, but time you cannot get back. So don't waste it, master the moment. You wanna realize yourself, you wanna bring your dreams to reality, Pay attention to your time, right? Boy, I tell you, this is reliving past pain in history, right? Reliving past pain. How many of us talk about all the things that we've been through or the different failures, the different things that, that happen? But here's what's so beautiful about when you get into self-realization. Remember, I keep saying this, we're in the realization phase, right? So now we're in the phase, we get to rewrite the story, right? So just think, you, you're the author. You, this is your story. You get to rewrite it. You get to set the stage. You get to put the. You get to put it all together. You get to create a brand new history, right? When we're realizing and living from our strength, when we're living from our values, and we're doing the things, we have the clarity. Again, make sure you really, really understand that passion and purpose and mission and vision for yourself. We we talked about this earlier in the process. Go back, revisit it. Make sure you bring it to the forefront. Stick it on your bathroom mirror. I don't care where you do and what you do with it. But all I do know is this, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to create our own history. It is time for us to control our own destiny. It is time for us to be of service and serve each other. It is time for us to collaborate and stop competing with each other to truly bring forth what we desire to have. I mean, there's so many great things that we can do. There's so many things that we can resolve. There's so many things and shifts that can take place when we write a new story, right? The story you tell yourself is your choice and we get to create it. We create our story, right? I, I say this all the time. It's not about dealing with reality. It's understanding that each and every day you create your reality. So rewrite the story, rewrite your history. Okay, we're coming, we're wrapping up here. The attitude, A, attitude is off center most of the time. It's amazing how easy it is for us to tell when we're off base. It's so, I, it's, I can tell you in a matter, I can tell you when my attitude is off based on what I want to put in my mouth. It is so simple, right? So if you want to know how to it, it, talk about monitoring those conversations, I can tell you immediately how I'm feeling based on how I want to eat. But I've also trained myself to ask myself in those times without judgment, hmm, what's going on, man? What's happening? What's happening that you want to have your fried chicken and apple pie, right? <laughs> what's going on in your world right now that's making you uncomfortable? So let's deal with what's making you uncomfortable and then let's see what you want to eat. So that's what I have to do. And then I have an attitude of gratitude. I am grateful for the things that I have. I'm grateful for every step I get to take. I'm grateful for the people that I get to meet, whether the relationships I, I want to focus on relationships growing, building relationships. I want to build relationships rather than build income because the income will come if you build the relationships. Too many of us focus in on how we're going to make the money and not focus in on building relationships, not focusing in on really giving more of who we are to support and serve someone else rather than serving our own needs. And what it really comes down to, more so than anything else that we ever talk about, is master that internal conversation. Because remember, your external results can be no different than the internal conversation that you have with yourself. So it is imperative that we master that inner conversation. Okay, so for many of us, we want to really, again, when you feel as if you're going in circles every day, right? The thing that has to happen is right to get inspired by your daily progress. 
So even if it's small little steps that we do every day, even if it's small little things that we do every day, right? So you see the, the, the graphic there of people who have, you know, you got the big genes and at some point, but it was through the things and the steps that they took on a daily basis that allowed that to happen, right? So we want to be inspired by our daily progress. We want to set empowering intentions that allow that to be a reality. So again, it comes down to our mission, comes down to our passion, comes down to our purpose, the things that we are truly, truly excited by, the things that jump us out of bed, that allow us to be and be able to serve and give ourselves, right? The other A, allowing others to rule your life. Man, oh man, oh man, right? So instead of allowing others to rule your life, we just talked about intentions, allowing yourself to be guided by your intentions, right? So I love this graphic here, passion led us here, right? So, so once you know what that passion lead, is leading you to, you set those intentions and really get clear about this. Others' opinions of me are none of my damn business, right? So what you think of me is none of my business because when I spend my time worrying about what you're thinking of me, then I'm not doing what I need to be doing for myself. And I do not participate. I will not participate in gossip or putting anybody down. I work on this consistently. And there are some days I fail terribly at it, especially when it comes to judgment. But I am aware of it. And I keep it in the forefront of my mind because I know that if I'm judging someone else, that truly what I'm doing is judging myself and I'm passing that on to me, right? And then finally, as we look at the L, lost with no map to find your way back, right? And so we, again, we're just, we're, we're going around doing the same things over and over again and not really finding our way back to ourselves, finding our way back to our truth, being authentic, being real, right? Making sure that you're, that you're living in your truth, right? It is so frustrating, right? When we, we, we put on these games, we put on these maps, we put on these things and, and we're, we're keeping ourselves and our power we're keeping, we're, we're, we're playing so small that we're not showing up to the world and we're just letting things stay the same things that we could change, right? So when we start to be able to live from the power of possibility instead of past pain, man, I tell you, and you know, you got to make a choice. You want the red pill or the blue pill? You got to make that choice and learn from those who have been where you want to go, right? So for me, I love to read and I'm always reading stories, inspiring personal, personal mastery and and things of that nature that allow me to learn from, from those that I admire and look at and say, okay, so how did they do this? What did they do? How did they do it? You know, and, and look at the things that they were able to do. So as we're wrapping this up, this is what we've already gone through. So if, if you go back, I'm not gonna go through this again because uh, I wanna leave some time for us to ask some questions or do some things or, or talk about some things that may be as part of your process. But remember, as we, as we go through this self-realization, what you believe about yourself, and this is I'm just wrapping this up, but this is key. What you believe about yourself will become your reality. So believe, believe the, the, the greatness that is within you. See yourself as I see you. Because if you see yourself as I see you, you will see how great you truly are. You will see the gifts that you really have. So see yourself through my eyes until you can see through your own. Remember, what you focus on grows. So focus on what you want. Focus on the things that are important to you. Remember, time once spent can never be replaced. So don't waste it. Look at every moment that you're spending. Are you being purposeful? Are you making that difference? Are you doing the things because you can't get that time back? You choose the story you tell yourself. So tell yourself a damn good story. Tell yourself a story that you want to have your grandchildren say and your great-grandchildren say when they tell that story about you, that they can say, wow, let me tell you a story about my my dad, let me tell you a story about my granddad. Let me tell you a story about my great, great grandfather, right? So you choose the story you wanna tell yourself. Master the inner conversation. Listen to yourself, see what's going on. Monitor that conversation, change it. Remember, acknowledge, challenge, transform. Don't let it control you. Set empowering intentions, empowering intentions. And don't care what anybody thinks of you. It's none of your damn business anyway. Don't participate in judgment. Don't participate in gossip right? And learn from those who've been where you want to go. So I know we went a, a little bit longer, but we're still going to open this up for some questions. And uh, let me just stop this real quick. Here we go. So uh, I, I just really want to express more and more to you that 
when we stop betraying ourselves, that's when we realize our dreams. That's when our dreams become a reality. When we get the courage to live by our mission, we get the courage to fully embrace our passion and our purpose. So Tara, let's see, do we have any questions or any comments from anyone? Well, one question that came up quite a bit is these are really big, great concepts that you just went over, all, all of these um, self-realization concepts. What is something I can do right now today to move myself forward? I would say when you really look at right now today, what you can do, and, and some this, <laughs> this may, and it may be a minute, it may be five minutes, it may be 10 minutes but really go into a very quiet meditation about your passion, about your purpose, and what's really truly important to you. Really bring forth that clarity, what makes you feel so very good, what brings the joy, what brings the excitement, what brings your life, what brings you to life, what really lights you up. And just bathe in that for a little while, whether it's a minute, whether it's two minutes, 30 seconds, five minutes, 10 minutes, right? And then, make your decisions from that place rather than from a place of fear or anywhere else. All right, well, we don't have any questions. I just really uh, hope and pray that there was something that you got from uh, what we did this tonight to really tap back into who you really are and to um, let's bring these dreams to reality, create those dream businesses and truly support people in being the supporting the greatness within them. So I will tell everybody good night and I will see you next week. Take care.